Hey, what's going on everybody? So this is another one of our kind of student success stories uh, with a student of Colt Steel's Web Developer Bootcamp. This is Greg Jacoby. Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Ian. It's great to connect with you again. Definitely, man. So uh, interesting story. Greg was actually one of my very first online tutoring students uh, through Colt's course. I've, I had done some a little bit of tutoring prior to that from some other uh, jobs that I had, but Greg was one of the first from the Web Developer Bootcamp. Yeah, that was, uh, God, how, how long ago was that now? Like four years, three years? Three years for sure, coming on four years almost. Wow, time flies. Yeah, so catch me up to speed. What has been going on? You started your own business? Did indeed. Um, let, let's just fly through those, those uh, three years there. Um, I ended up becoming the director of IT and marketing for a large restaurant group out in Arizona where I was living at the time. And uh, parallel to that, I, I ended up starting my own agency, um, uh, Bright Development. And it really was just a, a, a one-man band for quite a while. I partnered with another agency very closely called Bloom's Brand House. Um, I worked with uh, Nita Bloom really uh, on a bunch of different projects. Um, all the while, I was working at the Dahl Restaurant Group. Ultimately decided to part ways with Dahl Restaurant Group to pursue Bright Development more completely. And we went from being just a web design and development agency into doing more full-service marketing stuff for our clients. Um, it became clear to me as I got better and better at web design and web development that I had clients who would come and be like, well, we love the website, but can you do search engine optimization? And can you manage our social media? And uh, can you do uh, pay-per-click advertising? And, and so on and so forth. And at first, I would just refer them to someone else. But I started to think like, well, I don't really want to be losing this business. So I also ended up training myself um, in, in various digital marketing practices and bringing more people onto my team who are experts in their field. And it's been, it's been quite the ride, man. It's been a lot of fun. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Uh, so I saw, are you guys based out of New York? Yes. Okay. So when did that move happen? Actually early this year, um, right around February decided to, to move, move the whole thing into New York city. I have some places here in Brooklyn and uh, a number of clients in Manhattan. It's it's definitely been interesting. Sort of feel like getting the, the quintessential American experience here in the city. Uh, definitely have, have lived most of my life in smaller cities, smaller towns, more rural areas and states and uh, other places in the world. So it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been really interesting. That's really cool. So I think what my audience would probably be interested to hear um, is, well, first of all, do you use a, a variety of like languages and stacks for your various clients, or do you try to typically stick to like one set of like JavaScript or Ruby or whatever you guys are using? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good question. So three three years ago four years ago five years ago wordpress and it still is was a huge buzzword so a lot of the clients that i was coming into contact with wanted wordpress sites they didn't necessarily know what wordpress was but they had heard about it and they wanted it for their website you know fortunately that made things pretty easy for me as well because it means i don't have to build something out uh, completely from the ground up they have a front end editor that they can use if they so choose so I started training myself in, in WordPress. Uh, as we both know, the Web Developer Bootcamp prepped me in a lot of JavaScript and Node and Mongo. But when I started getting into WordPress, it became uh, clear to me that if I wanted to be as good of a WordPress developer as I can be, I needed to learn PHP. If you want to support DevSprout.io, then check out this Chrome extension that I created. You can add it to your browser with the click of a button. And then once it's installed, you can go over to udemy.com and anytime that you're thinking of buying a course, let's say you're just checking a course out, the extension will notice what you're doing and it'll actually redirect you to the same course page, but it'll add my affiliate ID to the URL. So you can see here, it's added my ID to the URL. And now if you do happen to buy that course, I'll make a small commission off of that sale. 
So uh, PHP became something that was super important. Um, when I started getting into more uh, e-commerce, um, it became important to learn Liquid and Shopify. Um, you know, Liquid is a proprietary language that Shop Shopify has, but it's very similar to a lot of other languages out there. So that was really helpful knowledge to have. Um, when it comes to more complex web applications that we've built for clients, it's been in React Native, Vue, um, Angular, uh, Node. But you can sort of see that there is a thread here, and that thread is JavaScript. I generally haven't gone outside of JavaScript um, a, because it hasn't been necessary, and B, because all of the new technology coming out these days is is primarily centered around JavaScript. Um, all of the new front-end frameworks and uh, awesome like back-end repos that people are coming up with, they're, they're mostly in JavaScript. Definitely. So are you teaching yourself these frameworks, or are you just hiring people that already know them and then just kind of using your existing knowledge of JavaScript to be able to manage those people? I do both. So I, as we are now, it's a team of um, six people. We bring on a couple, couple more as needed. Um, it's really important to me that I understand every project that's coming through Bright Development um, forwards and backwards. Now, I, I can definitely say that I'm not uh, an incredible expert with, um, you know, Angular, but I know Angular pretty well. If you came to me with an ultra complex project, I would be able to come up with uh, a game plan for it. But I would definitely need my team members to support me in it because, like I said, I'm not, you know, the incredible best Angular developer expert who's been doing it for 10 years and, you know, does nothing but Angular, you know. But know it well enough to stay on top of the project management, to understand what's uh, being shown to me, to help out with some of the coding myself. Um, and that does apply to a lot of a lot of the other framework with. Awesome. Um, so I've, I've got these fighter jets that fly over my house, so hopefully that doesn't pick up too much on the audio. Um, once you start talking again here in a second, I'll just mute my microphone. But. Um, in any event, I think one major question, and this is typically what I ask students, is first of all, what was your experience prior to taking Colt's course? And then from the time that you started Colt's course to where you are now, like how long was that? Did you start in 2016 or 2015? And then of course now we're into 2019. Yeah, yeah. I guess that was about, about four and a half, five years ago. I'm not actually sure on the year. Um, I think it was about five years. I, I'll just give a, a really, really brief background of my life here. I spent about um, six years sort of traveling the world, living a, a pseudo homeless lifestyle. I was volunteering at a lot of meditation centers. I ran meditation centers. Um, I was living off the generosity of the organizations that I was involving myself with. I wasn't making any money. And that was something that was extremely influential on my personal growth and my personal development. But there came a time when I was like, well, sort of tired of this lifestyle. I'd like to start making some money, do some, do some other things that I can't really do without having money. Um, I had been really interested in programming and development when I was uh, a young teen, and I had taught myself some stuff back then. But I sort of figured that I was ready to get into it. And, you know, Udemy runs these these specials all the time. And I was bumping around the Internet and saw that that at the time Colt's course was being offered for something crazy like like twelve dollars. So just said, why not? And uh, it was about a year after starting and comp uh, starting that course that I got my first um, my first position which was as the director of marketing and technology at the doll restaurant group. And I mean, yeah, it completely changed my life. The whole trajectory of my life uh, shifted tremendously at that point. Wow. That's, that's a really cool story, man. I would say uh, I actually didn't know that about your um, prior history. So that's really neat with the uh, meditation centers and whatnot. And it kind of sounds like, 
perhaps with that experience of like traveling around you you kind of know maybe you, uh, it sounds to me like maybe you brought some of that minimalist lifestyle into what you're doing now because um, I know like in New York City it's, it's no secret that's an expensive place to live right and so yeah. uh, and you're coming from uh, Arizona and so like you said before previously you were staying in kind of smaller rural areas and then boom big change New York City and on top of that you've started this new business like that's a lot of what most people would perceive to be like stressful changes and so I'm guessing some of that prior experience non-technical stuff but you know traveling and you know kind of living uh, just day to day has helped in this entire process yeah uh, absolutely I mean, those those experiences provided the entire foundation for my perspective and my approach. Um, and a lot of it really was just feeling certain isn't the right word, but trusting myself enough to know that uh, this is what I want and that despite the obstacles, I'm moving towards something that is actually good for me. And my temperament just is suited to running my own business and and working for myself i i crave um freedom and the ability to set my own schedule um and and so even though it it's been very hard and it has been it's been you know at times extraordinarily difficult and stressful but you know threaded throughout that is this just deep knowledge that um, i'm doing what i want to be doing and it's it's always a choice. It's a choice I make every day. You know, heck, man, I have the experience. I could go get a really, you know, well-paying job uh, here in the city, and I've interviewed for them, and I've been offered them. But this is this is what I want. And you know, even looking far beyond that is, you know, at some point in my life, I do want to return to living a, a lifestyle that's really focused on meditation and. Uh, has as you know, I teach meditation with a, a small organization I created called Project Mindfulness, um, and that's something that I would love to focus more of my time on. And it's not something that I can do unless I've created some financial security for myself. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you definitely hit the nail on the head with uh, with what you said, Ian. That's awesome. Well, uh, I think, I know you said you've, you're on kind of a tight schedule, but if you could answer one last question, I think what would be really valuable to everyone listening is uh, just kind of like some parting words of advice to existing students of the course who are kind of where you were several years ago, and they're just kind of in that, you know, uh, up in the air state where they're just like, you know, th maybe they're struggling with the learning, maybe the, the learning is going well, but either way, kind of what's next, uh, whether they should go work for a company or start their own business. Um, so if you have any nuggets of advice in that regard, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is, I don't, I don't quite recall, but I think Cole, and I know you've said this before. Um, the bottom line here is just getting, getting out and using your skills. Even if you're not feeling confident in your skills, even if you feel like your learning is not going well, get involved in something. It could be a, a favor you do for a friend. It could be a personal project. It could be a, a small freelance project that you do for a client. Get involved in something substantial and real that is outside of the course. And just start collecting those experiences, good or bad. You know, you can't avoid the bad experiences. They will happen. There's going to be a learning curve. There's challenges all the time, you know, even for me and I'm, I'm sure for you and even someone who's been developing for 30 years. Um, you know, you, 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 you take on a job and then discover halfway through, you're like, you know, here's an obstacle and I have to move my way around that. And ultimately, um, as, as most freelancers and business owners will tell you, it's not about collecting the knowledge that will allow you to, you know, immediately accomplish any project that comes your way. It's about developing the skills to work through the obstacles, um, and to work through the barriers and to work through the problems because it's impossible. It's impossible to have the answer to every question. But if you've gone through that process enough times, having the question, having the challenge, having the problem, and then solving it, you develop the confidence, you develop the skills that you need. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's just what's needed to move forward. And I think 
especially at the beginning, it doesn't matter whether you work for a company or whether you go freelance. Like I said, I really do believe that the bottom line is is a real world experience. So so just do it. Awesome. That's really great advice. Um, yep, that's definitely resonates with the message I've been trying to convey pretty much since day one uh, with students is just you just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And the, the sooner that you start doing real world projects and then if you're if your goal is to get a, you know, a desk job or what have you, the sooner you start interviewing a lot of students uh, from Colts course and people I've met through the different companies I've worked for and places that I've taught at the the biggest factor is like, oh, I'm not ready. You know, uh, well, let me just let me create one more personal project. Let me let me touch up my resume a little bit more. And it's like you got to get out of that bubble and just get out there and start interviewing and start creating these projects, whether it's something you do for free, like you said, or something you do for very cheap. There's like that grinding period where you you have to build some stuff and run into some problems. And that's where you're going to hone in on those skills that you were talking about. So that's really good. Exactly. And I think even for me, like I've interviewed a bunch of people to hire for my company and, you know, I'm not always looking for the most robust resume or, you know, the most years of experience. There's, there's, there's a lot to be said for your attitude and your, your willingness to put your best foot forward. And, um, you know, I, I look for that realness in the people that I hire that I, I want to know that you're going to be present with me and that you're going to do your best, you know, even if you come into challenges and that, you know, and I think that's really important because, you know, it is really, really easy to get lost in the the spreadsheet mentality of, of setting up your portfolio or your resume. Oh, I've got to have more. I've got to have more. I've got to polish. I've got to polish. Yeah, definitely. I, I think people lose sight of the human element where they, I mean, I've been guilty of this too, where you, some for some reason, somewhere along the way, you, you learn mistakenly that a developer is supposed to know everything. Like you're like this robot that just, oh, you want me to build this Angular app? Okay, bam, it's done perfectly, <laughs> no errors. Right, and right. And that's not it. Like there's, like you said, tackling problems, learning how to solve those problems as they come up. That's the human element. And then there's other things that are completely non-technical. Like how do you deal with that stress? How do you deal with people's personalities during that time if you're working on a team? It's not all about just being the number one developer who doesn't ever use Google <laughs> to solve stuff. Like. It's such a more complex human thing where you have to humble yourself and say, like, this is something I don't understand, but that's okay because I know how to problem solve. So let's tackle this and get it done. Exactly. That's it, Ian. Yeah, man. Cool, man. Well, Greg, I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time to chat with me. I know you got some stuff to do, but uh, let's stay in touch and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, you too, Ian. I, I appreciate it as well. And keep me posted, man. It's been great to connect with you. Definitely. Thanks a lot.